preach. Thank you, Pastor. It is such a joy to be able to be here for this final night of the missions conference. I was actually disappointed. I was expecting the choir to sing. And I am disappointed. I love hearing your choir sing. And uh, I shouldn't have said anything about it, but I did because I do. It is a blessing to have a choir that is consistent and faithful in the services of the church. One of the greatest ways we can glorify the Lord is through our music. One of my favorite verses is Psalm chapter 40 and verse 3. He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. One of the greatest ways to propagate missions through the world is through Christian music. That's why it is so important that we guard biblical Christian music. That's, Christianity is known through this whole world as the singing religion. Why do we sing? Because he hath put a song in our mouth. Not in our ear. You see, Christian music is not for entertainment. Christian music is to glorify God and be a testimony to others. He hath put a new song in my mouth. It's to be sung. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it. Isn't that unusual? How do you see a song? Let me tell you a quick story of what happened to me in China maybe 40 years ago. It's while they were all still wearing those gray uniforms and, and Christianity was absolutely forbidden in any way. I went to China. And I went in, I went with a, a tour. That's the only way I could figure out how to get in and meet with some of the Chinese Christians that I knew there. But as soon as I got to the country and left the airport, I left the tour. And I was picked up by some Christians there in China and they took me it was in the evening they took me down a dark street put a overcoat on me put a hat on me so that I wouldn't be recognized as a, a foreigner and I climbed up these little narrow dark stairs and went into this little tiny room and it was packed full of mostly old people and one of the leaders said to me now you have to be careful. When you preach, we want you to whisper. Because if we're heard, they will close us down and arrest our leaders. And then he said something very unusual. He said, now, we want you to preach as soon as we finish singing. <laughs> and I thought, now I'm supposed to whisper when I preach? But they're going to sing? But when they began singing, when they began the singing, I saw something that I have never gotten over. When they began to sing, the tears were flowing down their faces, but no sound was coming from their mouth. They were just moving their mouth to, I'm sure, the Chinese words. And I saw their song. Now, I could not help but imagine how that even though I could hear no sound in their room, that heaven was resounding with the beautiful singing 
of those Chinese Christians. You see, people need to see the difference. Now, I want to let you hear a testimony of one of our many hundreds of Japanese Christians who have come to know Jesus Christ. And his testimony is almost a testimony of Psalm 40 and verse 3, where someone saw the singing and feared and trusted in the Lord. This is the testimony of the man who is now the pastor of the largest Baptist church in the whole nation of Japan. And it's his own personal testimony given to us a few months ago, extemporaneously, was not rehearsed or anything. And I want you to hear his testimony about how he got saved, because I've seen this happen over and over and over again. And I think it will be a blessing to your heart, because the, the greatest blessing I've had as a missionary is to be able to work with national Christians. People from different cultures and different backgrounds. People who have been persecuted and have suffered for their faith. And yet they've been true and faithful to the Lord. Disowned by their families. Disinherited by their families. Until maybe 30, 40 years later, the parents get saved. And then they're taken back in. And they serve the Lord together for the remaining days that they have. I want you to meet and hear his testimony from his own mouth of how he got saved 50 years ago when he came to the opening meeting of the church that he's now the pastor of. He came not having any desire to be a Christian. He just wanted to learn English. But God got a hold of his heart. First of all, through music, and through, then through the message of the gospel preached at that time by Dr. Don Sisk, who preached the first message that he heard. But he decided he wanted to become a believer before he ever heard a Bible message because of the testimony of the music. If we could have the video, I'm ready for it. Thank you. This is Pastor Ogawa. My name is Ogawa Sogoro. I'm a Watashi Up to that time, I had never heard the gospel message. 
Jesús y el mundo fue. Nadie me da. Tengo que ir a la opinión de hoy. Jesus came into my heart. That is still Pastor Ogawa's favorite hymn. And every time I visit his church, he has me play the piano for them to sing as a congregation that song again, because he's never gotten over the fact. And I praise the Lord. If I had the time and the videos, I could show testimony after testimony after testimony of people who came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. We had been there just two years. This was our second church to help start. During first term on the mission field, God gave us four churches to start during that first four years. And we also started the Bible College that had its 47th graduation this past year. And you've been a part of all those things that have happened, and I appreciate you. I want you to turn very quickly to the book of 1 Kings. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 17. We've been talking a lot about faith promise giving. Actually, the only way to effectively give in such a way that we can please God with our giving is to give by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. So it is impossible to please God with the abundance of your giving. The only way we can please God is to give back to God what he wants us to give. And that's what faith promise giving is. I love to talk, talk about giving by faith. I think it's us Placing our faith in the promise of God is what true faith promise giving is. I'm going to give back to God through our church what he wants me to give to send missionaries around this world, and I'm going to trust him to enable me to give what he wants me to give, and then I'm going to depend on him to take care of me and all of my needs. And the more you read about giving in the Bible, the more you understand that's the only way we can really give to God. You see, we don't and we could never outgive God. We trust Him to enable us to give. I talked already about the little boy with the lunch. Insufficient. But he gave everything God wanted him to give that day. And then God, the Lord Jesus Christ, as he fed the 5,000, had more than enough. 
to accomplish what he wanted that little boy to give. There's another Old Testament story, and I know you've heard it, of the prophet Elijah and how he commanded a widow woman. This is an Old Testament example of faith giving according to the Word of God. 1 Kings chapter 17, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. I like Elijah. He stepped into the court of King Ahab. Just suddenly on the scene, we read nothing of him until he walks in and stands before wicked old King Ahab with Jezebel sitting right beside of him. And pointed his finger in his face and said, It ain't going to rain no more till I say so. That's exactly what he said. Now, you better make sure that you've gotten your message from God before you make a de declaration like that. But look at the next verse, verse 2. The word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. So he went. When God commands, we obey. It says, He went and did according unto the word of the Lord, and he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Now, I have an imagination. Where do you think the ravens got that meat and bread? If anybody was going to be eating during a time of famine, who would it be? I think it was old King Ahab. And he'd sit down for his breakfast, get ready to put his fork into that bacon, you say, well, he was a Jew. They didn't eat pork. He wasn't a good Jew. <laughs> so he probably did eat bacon. And the prophet ate what God told him to eat. So I don't know what it was. But the raven, I think when old King Ahab sat down to eat whatever it was he ate, the window was open because it was too hot to shut it. And whoosh, that bird would come flying through there and pick up his hot meat off the table and fly it straight to Elijah, and he would eat it while it was still warm from King Ahab's table. And then the same thing in the evening. When it got evening time, he had that big porterhouse steak sitting there, getting ready to cut into it and enjoy his supper while the rest of his people were starving to death, and whoosh, the raven came flying in the window again and took it straight to Ahab, uh, straight to Elijah from Ahab's table. Now, I can't prove that happened. But none of you can prove that it didn't. <laughs> because it doesn't say in the Bible. But then something on you, you see, the prophet made a pro proclamation. And then he heeded the word of God, and the Lord said, hide yourself. Now, if it had been me, Pastor, I wouldn't have wanted to hide myself. I'd have wanted to walk up and down the streets and say, I'm the one that stopped the rain. But you see, God must receive the glory when we give to him. That's another good thing about faith giving. God gets the glory. He enables us to give what we cannot afford to give. 
Now, I've had experiences with raven giving. That's what I call it. When I was in Tennessee Temple Bible College, I had to quit going to class because my shoes wore completely out, and it was wintertime. And I prayed to the Lord, and I said, Lord, if you'll give me shoes, any kind of shoes, it doesn't make any difference what they are, so I can keep going to class. I got a package in our little school post office, size of a shoebox, and I said, surely not. You know how we are with our great faith. I opened that box when I got back to my room and it had a little note in it and it, and it said, you do not know who I am, but your mother came into my second-hand clothing store and I felt impressed to send you a pair of shoes. They weren't used, they were new. They were Florsheim shoes. The, the note said... I have no idea what your size is, so they probably won't fit. What do you think? They were a perfect fit. You see, God can meet our needs in miraculous ways. And I kind of like the raven giving, where you don't have to feel obligated to anybody. But Elijah was enjoying that kind of a lifestyle at the brook. And he was getting all the food he needed and everything. But look at verse 8. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying... I'm, I'm sorry, look at verse 7 first. It says, It came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain. Have you ever had your brook go dry when you felt like you were right in the place that God wanted you to be? Let me give you a little bit of warning. Don't ever move because your brook goes dry. Wait until the word of the Lord comes to you again, saying, get thee out of this place. And notice what he said. It says in verse 9, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Don't just go for a visit. Dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. Now again, my imagination kicks in. I can imagine Elijah being like me and saying, man, I'm moving up. Some rich old man has died and he's got a widow woman and I am going to be eating high on the food chain. And then he went. And what did he see? See, I want you to think of yourself as being like that little widow woman. Because an unusual thing had happened to her. God told Elijah, I have already commanded a widow woman to feed you, to sustain you. Now you go there. So in verse 10 it says, He rose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, he was surprised. It wasn't a rich old widow woman. There was a widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And she was going to fetch it. He called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, he must not have had very much, that I may go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. See, she was saying to Elijah, 
I know what God told me to do. But I can't do it. Many times in Faith Promise Missions Conferences, when the Holy Spirit first impresses a person's heart about what they should be giving weekly, they think, no way. No way that God wants me to give that. Just like this little widow woman. God wants me to sustain the prophet of God through the whole years ahead of this famine? I can't do that. And Elijah said to her, in verse 13, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. The audacity of that preacher. going out to visit a poor little widow woman, maybe to take a, 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 a possibility of a little bit of food from the church to that widow woman. And she says, Pastor, he, he says, would you give me something to eat? And she says, Pastor, I don't have but one thing, and I, I'm going to eat that, and then I'm going to die. And he says, well, give it to me first. I'll take that. Just give it to me first. And then he said, and I'm going to close, go and do as you've said, but make for me first, and bring it to me, and after, make for thee and for thy son. Can you see faith promise giving in that? You give first, because God is the one that told you to do it. See, I'm not telling you to initiate the thought of giving. You've already, you know, God has already commanded you to give. Now you obey the command of God, and God's not only going to take care of this prophet who's been eating every day, but he's also going to take care of you and your son and your whole household. And that's exactly what he did. She went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. You see, if you, when you give, turn in your cards next Sunday, will give what God wants you to give, it will be amazing what Ben Salem Baptist Church can continue to do for the cause of Christ and missions. It'll be far beyond what you can ask or think. You see, because God, when he commands us to do something, he enables us to do what he commands. So like that little widow woman, she was able... Now, why do you think God allowed that brook to go dry? Of course, one of the reasons was the natural reason. It wasn't raining. But there was more than that. I believe there were two reasons. One was so that he could move that prophet from that place of raven provision to the place of widow woman provision. And there were two reasons behind that. Number one was to humble a prophet. One of the most humbling things of being a missionary is taking offerings from people you know that humanly speaking should not be given to you. 
But if God's commanded them to, they should be doing it. But he also had that brook to run dry to keep from humiliating a godly widow woman. He not only had somebody take care of her, she reversed the roles and had her to take care of them. And see, that's what God's doing for you. All these people that are getting saved out in these pagan lands all over the place. He's commanding you as a church, sustain them. You give what they need. You can say, I can't, but that's not faith. But if by faith you will say, Lord, I will give what you want me to be. To the, yes, I might make a mistake. I might get the wrong impression in my heart. I'm a human and I, I'm not perfect. But I believe if I am sincere, I can prove the, the sign's gone now, but I can prove the sincerity of my love by, willing, by being willing to give sacrificially so that God can take care of me. You see, you don't give to the Lord like this. I mean, you don't receive from the Lord like this. You receive like this. And send it out to where God wants it to go. And God will supply all of your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I believe that we find in the Scriptures Paul's prayer letter when he writes and he says, it's not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit to your account. And I am obligating myself as a missionary to bear fruit to the account of your church as you give. And I know I can't ever pay a dime of it back. But, my God. The God that takes care of me through you, my God, shall supply all your need as a church and as individuals who are doing the giving. Because I have commanded you to send missionaries, to send preachers, to send the gospel message to all the nations of the world and to every person in this world. And you must never be content and satisfied with what you get. Let me read you this poem and then, Pastor, I want you to come. Sustaining the servants of God. It's what you're commanded to do. As they each go forth to their call, the sending is left up to you. You say... What I have is so small, it won't even meet my own need. But if by faith you will give, you'll find God will bless you indeed. The oil in your cruise may be low, the meal that you have oh so thin, but you will find it enough if you will first give it to Him. And though you may give all you have, you'll find you can give it again. No matter how much you give out, the Lord will put more than that in. So keep what you have, if you will, and you can just eat it and die, or give to the Lord in His cause and reap great rewards Amen. by and by. Pastor.